three essential steps to starting to write songs if you know absolutely nothing. The first step is choosing what kind of music you want to write. Because a lot of people use the word song when really what they mean is writing pieces or creating tracks, etc. You see, the original meaning for song was reserved specifically for when you had a voice and an instrument, and oftentimes just one instrument. These were known as Lieder, I believe, in Germany back in the time of the Romantic era of what we now know as classical music. And so the Romantic era had things like this, where they go... the words because they're in German, but there's something of that sort, and it was normally accompanied by a piano or a guitar in that way. And that was a song because it had a singer who would stand and normally not have his instrument with him, but rather someone else would accompany him, and that was their songs. And then that was different from their pieces. And their pieces would be orchestral or string quartets, etc. And then they would, in addition to that, they would have different kinds of pieces, preludes and nocturnes, and songs were reserved specifically for when you were singing and normally singing with an instrument. Nowadays, we call everything songs. We call pieces songs, track songs, but if you really want to create classical music, then it's really important that you differentiate that as an exercise in writing a folk song. And it is especially important that you differentiate all of that from, say, writing EDM dance tracks, because those are all gonna have very different needs when it comes to how you learn them, etc. And that leads to kind of the second point. The second thing you need to do, I believe, is learn how to play songs on an instrument or if you're going to do dance tracks or you're going to do the pieces, classical pieces, you just need to learn whatever has been done before and how to create it. Because if you try and learn without knowing an instrument, especially when it comes to songs, it's going to make it extremely difficult. So let's break that down a little bit. If you wanna learn how to play an instrument, one of the things that would make you absolutely very likely to stop wanting to learn to play that instrument is if you neglect songs. Because there's a lot of other tutorials on YouTube on how to play guitar, for instance, and they're extremely dull. They want you to do things such as this. And then they have you go down the scale. I'm just kidding. They have you think, do all these exercises that are completely unnecessary when what you really should be doing is you should pick up an instrument that you like that fits the style that you like and then learn songs that exist in that style. So if you want to learn pop songs, I recommend you learn to play some pop songs. If you want to learn some rock songs, I recommend you get an electric guitar and you learn to play rock songs. If you want to play folk songs, get an acoustic guitar and play folk songs. And that way, you will start to learn some of the common chord progressions, the common ways that people communicate within that language. And then this is particularly important if you want to do classical music of some particular type where you need to play piano, for instance. That's going to be very, very difficult to program on a keyboard. If you have an actual piano keyboard, that will be something that can deeply assist you. And then if you've got dance tracks, you can create those merely with samples, but a lot of people have way more fun and they do it way faster if they learn to play those things on a digital keyboard such that they can arrange chords and drum patterns, etc., using that. And that becomes way easier if you learn the instrument. With that said, a lot of people, when you ask them to learn other people's songs before they do songwriting, they'll say something like, but I want to be original. And really, this highlights a very interesting aspect of what we think when we think of originality. Because originality comes from understanding what has already been done. If you don't understand what's already been done, you're actually more likely to just do what the beginners do in whatever field you're building in. Like if I wanted to 
advance the world of mathematical science, I would have to know quite a lot of mathematical science to make sure that I wasn't copying any other theses, any other studies that had already been made. And the same is true in music. If you want to learn or be original in music, you need to make sure that the ground that you're covering is actually original. If you don't, you're very likely to think what you've created is original, but it's actually not. You're just unaware of who's done it in the past or the many people who have done it in the past. And that's one other thing. When you're pursuing songwriting, a lot of people prioritize originality over beauty. When beauty is really the more important thing so that you can enjoy it and other people can enjoy it and it can connect with them. Novelty wears off with everything, but beauty is lasting. I mean, just think about the world. The world, our creator made it with a bunch of archetypes. You have trees and all of these trees have differences, but they also have remarkable similarities. And in the animal kingdom, you've got the mammals, you've got reptiles, etc. There are these archetypes of common similarities where it's not necessary that everything is absolutely original, but rather that everything takes certain foundations and then is original in this or that aspect. And if you understand the genre that you want to work in, this also becomes a lot easier as well. Because in folk music, for instance, these really fundamental chords are very common. Like if you can't really have very convincing old folk music, traditional folk music, if you're using jazz chords. These traditional earthy chords are an essential part of the genre, I think. And so if you were trying to ignore that but play folk music, you probably would just stray away from the style. So styles allow you to identify what is it that I'm okay with not being original about so that I can explore the other things and be original in that way. Great ways to be original are with lyrics from a unique perspective or style or with melodies that in some way just haven't been heard before. And they don't need to be super complicated melodies. They don't need to be melodies that go outside the key and are jazzy, etc. very sophisticated. They can just be very fitting, and then you write chords that are fitting to those melodies. If you learn the styles, if you learn the songs that exist and the style that you want to write in, all of this becomes clear and it opens up to you. Now one other objection that people have to learning songs and learning an instrument is that, say, John Lennon, Kurt Cobain, these famous songwriters didn't know music theory, so why should I learn music theory? But if you think about what they did before they wrote songs, they likely learned a bunch of songs. And learning the songs, while not teaching you the function to your ear that this A7 chord might have, does teach you that the A7 chord is normally followed by the D chord. And if you're in the key of D, you'll start to figure out, okay, the D chord is the resolved sounding chord in the key of D, and the A7 is possibly one of the most tense in the key of D. And then you start building this understanding of resolution and tension so that even if you don't understand music theory as written in the books, you still understand it with your ear. That's what I believe a lot of people who, quote, didn't know music theory ultimately learned. So they learned songs and then they picked up the patterns of those songs so that maybe they didn't know music theory, but by learning an instrument, they still used music theory. So that's the second step, and possibly most important to having an easy start to songwriting. Learn other people's songs, and particularly learn other people's songs on an instrument. Now then the final step is to simply start writing. A lot of people are a little afraid to start writing. They think that if they write something bad that for some reason it's going to be bad for them in the long run, when in fact everyone writes something a little bad when they start out. Uh, my first song was about a marketplace, but it didn't really highlight anything interesting about the marketplace. It was very generic because I hadn't learned to paint legitimate pictures yet. And so the chorus went like this. Welcome to the marketplace, we love to see you here. And we hope that you have taste for a lovely atmosphere. Which is, you know, not horrifying because I knew some basic chords, but as I would learn more, I would come to realize that that was a very, very, very common progression. In fact, potentially the most common. And additionally, the melody is so common that it almost appears to be borrowed from many children's ditties. Now, currently, 
I still really love these chords and I like simple melodies and I like earthy mm -hmm. lyrics that are about things like marketplaces. However, in time and with practice, I've learned the ways to make those things more interesting and to be more original while also increasing the beauty by increasing the depth and the expansiveness of the stories that you can tell. And that all just comes with writing. Writing and then being self-critical without the critiques being of your skill as much as they are just of the song. Even today, I'm still incredibly harsh on myself when it comes to critiquing my songs, but I'm not very harsh on myself when it comes to critiquing myself as a person, as a songwriter. I never really take any song and go, because this song is lame, I must not be a good songwriter. Because what does it matter how good I am as a songwriter, mm -hmm. as long as I, in the process of all of this practice, may eventually come across a song that I like, but as something that I find striking and that other people find striking. Here's one last thing I might leave with you. Uh, there's no such thing really as writer's block. There's just a sense that people get from time to time that what they write is not good enough. And that only becomes a block if you let it. The best way to overcome writer's block is to let yourself write the stuff that isn't good. Because certainly some thoughts must be coming into your mind even when you have writer's block. Some words, it's impossible that you're thinking no words. And if you're thinking some words, something can get on the page. Something can be played with the chords. And if you're doing something, then eventually you will come across something that you like. And if you can't find something that you like, consider learning a new song. Consider, consider reading a poem. Consider reading the Bible. These kinds of things will help you to build a bigger foundation of words and thoughts and truths so as to reinforce your music. I guess one extension of that is when it comes to writing, instead of thinking of it like you're producing something, like sculpting, I like to think of songwriting more as fishing because you basically can't guarantee that you're ever going to come across like the big fish or the great song at one particular time. But the more time you spend out on the lake or songwriting, the more likely it is that that great big fish will come around. And once it does, you'll really get a sense of how great it is to write songs and that'll motivate you to continue.